manifest appearing of the image to the beast, the government of Satan. Jeffrey Leon, welcome to this edition of Satan Strategic Command, dedicated to the advancement of Christian theology, explicating the mark of the beast. May God bless the reading of his holy word. Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6, And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will shew unto thee the judgment of the great harlot that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit, and in the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy having seven heads and ten horns and the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stone and pearls having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication and upon her forehead was a name written mystery babylon the great the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth and i saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of jesus and when i saw her i wondered with great admiration so guys uh, here in Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6, we know we know that this depicts the final seat of all lost souls in the kingdom of hell, arrayed in a graduating scale in accordance to their works and their, their manifest proximity uh, to the appearing of Antichrist in our world. It's how God has evaluated these people by their works and uh, as they are... Uh, laboring to make manifest the mark of the beast within our world and the the appearing of the one that gives them power and that has anointed them with the spirit of antichrist to captivate the world with the mark of the beast so I wrote here, this is uh, Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 and 2. This, the, here we have the appearing of the secular powers of the world that bow down to the beast, his image, and the harlot, the image to the beast, and, the, and that the image of the beast is a man who bears the seal of Satan in his heart. Revelation chapter 13, verse 15 through 17. And it's, it's apparent that, that these are secular powers and these are people that are without knowledge and cognizance of what is true. And this is, this is for some reason, God has concealed himself from these people, um, these worldly power, these kings of the earth, and they are they are laboring with with the the image to the beast to make manifest as they're subjugated by the image of the beast they're laboring to make manifest the appearing of antichrist and the well first the mark of the beast that the seal of satan that resides within all flesh as the mark of the beast and the appearing of antichrist the king that gives them power and anoints them with his his spirit of a, the spirit of antichrist the spirit of a re rebellion against god and uh, makes, captivates them, and thus they are made manifest as his children at at his appearing. So we know that 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 these these uh, these people that appear, these kings of the earth that that are committing that they come hither. I'll show you these. Uh, wait, wait, wait. And there came one of the seven angels, which had seven vials, talked to me, saying unto me, Come hither, I'll shew unto thee the judgment of the great harlot that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. And I take this to mean I, 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 kings here to be people that are in authority and people that are residing in the glory of the world. It's not just, and then it mentions the the inhabitants of the world so it is also the public's uh it appears here too the general public at large but um we know that that um that these are people that are appearing that and without the presence and the glory of God residing within their hearts and they're without knowledge of what is true and this is how cuz we know nobody nobody would 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 if they were knowledgeable, we know rational people will not drink poison unless it's disguised as lemonade. And it's this is what's happening. This is the spirit of Antichrist is being disseminated by the image of the beast. And that's what's happening spiritually. I personally believe that when people are uh, conversing with the image of the beast, it's the same as being spiritually, it's the same as being bitten by a rattlesnake or a king cobra. You are being anointed with the spirit of Antichrist and spiritually you are, you are, you're being poisoned and intoxicated uh, spiritually. So you, and this, this intoxication, 
revelation as the people are anointed with the spirit of antichrist blinds them to what is true that's the that's the definition of babylonian captivity lack of cognizance of what is true and this appears in john chapter 8 verse 31 and 32 if you continue it where Jesus said, if you continue in my words, then are you my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And this is a reference I personally believe, as I understand Isaiah chapter 24, verse 21 and 22, where God depicts, the through the prophet Isaiah, depicts um, the imprisonment, people that are captivated by the mark of the beast as being prisoners to, to the Lord, ultimately prisoners to the Lord. So we know that that This captivity here, uh, it's, it appears to me that that Jesus is actually referencing the mark of the beast in the final captivity of all lost souls in the kingdom of hell when he says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. If you continue in my word, then all you my disciples indeed. And he also said in John 14, 6, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And in John 17, 3, this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. So it's apparent that these people that appear, these kings and the general, popula and the general population that appear here um, um, in captivity in Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 and 2, are people that are not cognizant of what is true. They cannot receive the glory of God. They're not, they're, we know that they're not actually, they're not in any form or fashion. They've, they've been cut off vertically. They have fallen from mercy and grace that's declared in 2 Thessalonians 2, 3, and 4 and Revelation chapter 18, verse 1 through 8. They have fallen from, from grace and they've become captive. They're now prisoners to, they're captive by Satan, but ultimately they're, they're prisoners of the Lord as the Lord um, allowed them to be captivated in the rebellion against him. So it's it's a it's a so this these these kings and the inhabitants of the earth that appear here in revelation chapter 17 verse 1 and 2 are are actually um it's 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 uh it's, it appears to me to be government and secular people and people that are enablers that are allowing that become uh inhabited with the spirit of Antichrist and they become judged by God and they are thus captivated with the mark of the beast so um, we know the image of the beast pours out the spirit of Antichrist upon the entire world Revelation chapter 14 verse 9 and 10 and this is the solicitation of the worship of death that's being poured out upon the children of God uh, on the children of God and the children of man also which I believe is one and the same because uh, uh, um, the children of God will ultimately receive the seal of God, and we know that uh, children don't are not don't stand condemned before Holy Father God because they're not cognizant of the uh, uh, complex machinations of evil like adults are. So, um, so we know the image of the beast is pouring out the solicitation of the worship of death, the spirit of Antichrist upon the children of God, and the children of man. One John two fifteen through eighteen, where we have the deepest roots of the spirit of Antichrist. One Timothy six ten, where we have uh, the love of money appearing as the root of all evil, and of course Romans three thirteen gives us the full spiritual transforming process of those that are actually conversing in organized crime with the image of the beast that are being taken captive by him. The image of the beast appears first. He's the he's the harvester. He appears. Um, to uh, within the beast and the second incarnation of the beast in Revelation 13, 11 through 18. And he's there because he's not in the first incarnation of the beast in Revelation 13, 1 and 10. He's in the second incarnation of the beast. And he's there because he's there. He is actually the, the mediator, administrator, and minister of Satan to captivate the entire world with the spirit of Antichrist and cause the mark of the beast to fall upon them as manifested by the seal that resides within his heart in Revelation 13, 15 through 17. So This is the, these labors by the image of the beast are apparent to for the fulfillment of all worldly lusts, filling up the fullness of iniquity within vessels that are chosen for destruction that have been that have chosen destruction upon themselves. We see this here in Psalm chapter thirty four, verse twenty one and twenty two, where it states. Evil shall slay the wicked, and hate they that hate 
the righteous shall be desolate. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. So here we have, well, this appears to be another reference to uh, the mark of the beast that it, it we know is the abomination of desolation. Matthew chapter 24, verse 15. Galatians chapter 4, verse 27. More are the children of the desolate than she which hath an husband, which is a direct reference by Paul in the, in the book of Galatians to um, the final captivity of all lost souls in the kingdom of hell with the mark of the beast and the seal of God um, uh, residing uh, upon the saints of righteousness that are are fit to meet the husbandman at the wedding at the second advent of Jesus Christ. So um, this says Psalm 34, 21, evil shall slay the wicked and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. So this here appears to me to be a, a direct reference to the mark of the beast coming upon and their spiritual, the manifestation of their spiritual captivity. It says, and they that hate the righteous righteous shall be desolate. So this is a manifestation of the mark of the beast that resides and it's 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 the spirit of antichrist operational capacity as it resides within them. They hate the righteous and this is the manifestation of their condemnation because they 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 as they are they grow satanically and they are anointed and they regenerate and they fan the flames of of antichrist within their souls cursing and repeating words of death in their environment they are actually uh, they're growing spiritually and they're growing they're 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 transgressing and they're they're growing uh, 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 they're they're manifesting the 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 presence purpose and power of of sp the spirit of antichrist within their lives and so but we do know that jesus christ is 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 today is in the heavenly sanctuary he's he's in the most holy place he's making intercession for men so and as long as jesus is still in the heavenly sanctuary mercy and grace is abiding upon all flesh. And Romans chapter 5, verse 20 and 21 makes it clear that where sin does abound, grace abounds even more. So we know that these people are still, uh, people can make grave mistakes in their lives, and all it takes is one touch by God to show them the error of their ways and, and the, the fact, and, and bring them back from this pit of destruction that's being uh, uh, described here, depicted here by, by the psalmist. So the Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate we know that that the saints that that the image to the beast is pouring out um, the spirit of antichrist the worship of death and he's he's tormenting uh, not only in a in a passive capacity he's uh, excuse me in a passive capacity he is tormenting um, and attempting to pour out the spirit of antichrist upon the children of God and God is declaring here in Psalm chapter 34 verse 22 the Lord redeemeth he's and to redeem it means to buy back so that says the Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate there's an old saying that goes uh, uh, that for the righteous this is the closest to hell we will we will ever experience and ever get and for the wicked this is the closest to heaven that they will ever get and that's what this is passage is actually saying here and reflecting and and in Psalm chapter 34 verse 21 and 22 and this is depicting the fact that that God has when in the final moments of this earth's history and as the image of the beast ministry became manifest amongst amongst all flesh that that God didn't just pour this this pain and this torment out on just the wicked to to separate them from his presence. He didn't do that. And the thing is, what's separating the righteous from the wicked is their own choices. And God is this is what God is declaring here. And so I just want to make it that very clear that 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 the 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 pouring out of the spirit of antichrist and the torments of people's flesh is not only occurring on the wicked people it's occurring on the righteous those that are going to live through it and god's declaring here psalm chapter 34 verse 21 and 22 that that the evil that evil shall slay the wicked by their own choices and god will redeem those that that choose to serve and love him and cultivate the fruits of righteousness and magnify his glory through it and realize because this is what babylonian captivity is it's 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 capturing people in captivity and and 
it's confusing them about what is true. And that's the whole purpose of Babylonian captivity is to 1 Corinthians 14, 33. God says, I'm the, I'm not the author of confusion, but of peace as in all the churches of the saints. And this is what I believe this is the trick that Satan, this is the, the falsehood that Satan is using to, to make people upset and think that God has done this to them and nothing could be further from the truth. This is this judgment by God for, for the, the, the 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 it, upon the ends of the world as we know it is is not only it's not only coming upon the wicked it's coming upon the righteous too but the righteous are choosing to continue in the things uh, and to continue to trust God that He loves them and that He's true and not not be putting God in the place of of the usurper which is the one that's there to destroy men's souls. And so that's 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 the whole that's the whole captive captivating process right there is to to captivate people and to blame God for what pe free moral agents chose to do of their own volition. And we all have free moral agency. If we didn't have that, then we would be captive to God uh, without being able to to cultivate the fruits of righteousness of, of our own accord and to manifest our own our own uniqueness within the children of God. So we have, you know, we have the the the, the abomination of desolation, the 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 mark of the beast, and the 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 soliciting of the worship of death, and the the torments of the flesh are coming not only upon the 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 wicked people of the earth. To cultivate them as children of Satan, but it's coming upon the righteous, and the righteous are withstanding it. That's that's what's that's and that's another manifestation of of the greatness and glory of God that the righteous are able to withstand this and to live through it. And God declares that He will redeem them. He'll He'll bring them back from this desolation and this separation from Him, and magnify His glory and fullness. And it, and the Bible states that 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 you know Paul states that nothing in this world is is to even to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us. So we know that God is not the author of the of the workings and of the labors of Satan and his children. He's not he did not author this. He may have predicted it, but he didn't author it. He didn't author it and he's not in it. We know God is light and in him is, in him is no darkness at all. And we know that 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 the demons of hell are resigned to darkness, two Peter two four, and that Satan resides in darkness, and that that this is the darkness is the very absence of God. You know, we know that in Him is light, and is no darkness at all. One John chapter one verse five through seven. So we know that God did not Arthur just because he he predicted it and he foretold it through uh, say this this horrible captivity to the the appearing of antichrist and as satan's children in the final moments of earth's history just because he predicted it we know that he did not author it so psalm chapter 9 verse 16 and 17 states the lord is known by the judgment we, which he executeth the wicked is snared in the work of his own hands god is declaring here right here he's declaring i did not author this but I didn't overthrow. If he overthrew anybody's will, he would, and, and as, as men choose to serve him or no, then he would be forcing people to serve him. So he doesn't overthrow people's will. There's another adage that all it takes is for evil to prosper is for good men to do nothing. And so it says, uh, Psalm 9, 16 and 17, the Lord is known by the judgment which he executeth, the wicked is snared in the work of his own hands, and the wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that sh that forget God. So we have this, this turning, I believe, is the transformation. It's actually their spiritual transformation into the full manifestation of the children of Satan. Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6, the satanic spiritual vacuum of death and darkness that consumes all flesh. Ecclesiastes 8, 8 makes it very clear. No man hath that power over the spirit to retain the spirit. If God withdraws, uh, because it, it, in just justly and in judgment, you know, and he's not going to force anybody into the kingdom of heaven. 
you know, he'll withdraw and he'll let wicked men choose their own destruction, but he does rely. He does rely on the governments of the world to, to disseminate judgment, justice, and righteousness as he's manifestly declared himself um, um, within the United States Constitution, giving people freedom to choose to serve him or no without penalty. That's the highest manifestation of, of God's presence operating in government that that can be can be made manifest without incorporating, uh, uh, you know, becoming a theocracy. And so this is this is you know this is uh, democracy, and we we know the dem democracy and democratic process. There's no other way to cultivate in capitalism the fruit, the harvest of the earth, and this comes through democracy and democratic process and constitutional protections, giving everybody freedom to choose to serve God or no. And without penalty, and to cultivate, uh, uh, um, you know, life is what you make of it. And old adage, life is what you make of it. It's what you, what you get, what you, you reap, what you sow. And so, Revelation chapter seventeen, verse one through six, is the satanic spiritual spiritual vacuum of death and darkness to consume all flesh. Ecclesiastes eight eight. It is the absence of God in the hearts. One John chapter one, verse five through seven, where God declares. And where uh, John declares in him is light, and the, it, God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. Um, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 and 4 and 6 and 7. But if our gospel be hid, it is into the lost, it, it is hid to them that are lost, and whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, whose image, image of God, should shine unto them. And the incorporation of everlasting destruction for all those who chose to be ruled by satanic powers. Psalm chapter 9, verse 15. The heathen are sunken down into the pit that they that they made, and in the net which they hid is their own foot taken. The, the Bible makes it very clear here. Again, he's not this or he didn't author man's union and incorporation of 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 satanic power and 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 uh becoming organized with the spirit of antichrist against him to satanically harvest what they cannot harvest as natural men as the rules of of judgment righteousness and fairness reside in the united states constitution today so he said i'm not he's absolutely god appears nowhere in the souls of those that are residing in revelation chapter 17 verse 1 through 6 with the mark of the beast god's not there's no glory there's that's that and that's the thing there's no manifest glory of god that they have just they're residing in suspended animation they're dead souls residing in suspended animation about to be judged uh, of, of worthy of eternal separation from god and set apart for exclusion with the devil and his angels so Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6 is the absolute annihilation of constitutional protections and democratic liberties in the immediate environment and sight of the image of the beast. Revelation chapter 13, 4, and they worship the dragon, which gave power unto the beast, and they worship the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast, who is able to make war with him? Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6 is the manifestation of Satan's government. It, it is his ideology and presence concealed in a fraudulent manifestation of righteousness. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13 through 15, where we have the ministry of the image of the beast that appears in, I believe, closest spiritual proximity to the appearing of Antichrist, as he's depicted as the names of blasphemy appear within the the beast and we know the beast is in revelation chapter 17 verse 1 through 6 is antichrist revelation 13 18 specifically names him so and he had power to give light and excuse me here is wisdom let him that hath understanding count the number of beasts for as the number of a man is number 603 score and six so and we have uh, we have false apostate christianity appears the harlot the that's yet in her sins she's unfit to meet the husbandman at 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 the wedding, which is the second advent of Jesus Christ. And we have apparent, what we have here, the golden vessel we know represents the kingdom of Babylon. And we know that Satan cannot crown himself in the kingdoms of men until he has first seated himself as king in the hearts of all flesh. And every kingdom, every kingdom is, uh, requires a king. And the very first, uh, uh, the very first two verses of Revelation chapter 17, verse one through six depicts the kings of the earth and, uh, 
with whom the kings of the earth and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So they're not, they're, they're, they're spiritually, they're captivated with the spirit of Antichrist and they cannot discern what is true because they cannot, they, they're not vertically, they've been detached vertically from the light of life and the glory of God, and they're no longer capable to cultivate the fruits of righteousness and to receive of the glory of God within their soul. So we have the golden cup up here that's full of abominations and fornications. It's the spirit of Antichrist, and she's drinking of it, and she's disseminating it amongst all of her, uh, uh, all those that adhere to her her power and it's not just those that are serving it's actually those that are we know that the mark of the beast occurs in, on people's foreheads or in their hands and so uh, uh, revelation and that appears in the seal of Satan revelation 13 15 through 17 so it's also passively it's a direct service but it's and it, but it's a passive manifestation of captivity also so the golden cup we know ultimately represents the king that resides over the kingdom of Babylon that has that has blinded the entire world to what is true. Like I said, there's probably hundreds of millions of people in this country that don't labor to cultivate the fruits of righteousness and magnify the glory of God, but they passively receive of the fruits of life. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, me to temperance against such there's no law. So we have we have this the the god's evaluation of those that are in false apostate christianity as manifest by the harlot that are laboring with the spirit of, in, in conjunction with the spirit of antichrist and that purpose to make manifest antichrist within our world we now we know that that the beast is a, is a civil power and that the, the the names of blasphemy that appear within the the beast are also a civil power and that the the harlot is an ecclesiastical power and so we have the the, the ecclesiastical power the harlot lifting up the golden cup in her hand and arrayed with jewels and we know that these are the souls of those that enabled an ecclesiastical setting to allow these and, and that are arrayed in closest as they've been evaluated by God for their works and they're arrayed in close in closest proximity physically to the appearing of Antichrist and the, the thing is they're the very first uh, uh, the very first jewels that appear uh, uh, souls that are arrayed upon the harlot are gold First, it's gold, it's precious stone and pearls. So here we have, we have the, the gold will be these, these people that are evaluated by God will be people that are in closest proximity to the appearing of Antichrist. They're in Babylonian captivity. They have the mark of the beast and they're no longer cognizant of what is true. They're no longer cultivating the fruits of righteousness, Galatians 5, 22 and 23. And they're no longer capable of magnifying the glory of God. And they are... They're in Babylon. They're 1 Corinthians 14, 33. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace as in all the churches of the saints. God is no longer imparting to them light, enabling them to discern light and life. John chapter 1, verse, the gospel of John chapter 1, verse 4 and 5. In him was life, and that life was the light of men, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. English Standard Version, and the darkness has never overpowered it. So these people, these people that are in false apostate Christianity, and specifically the very golden, uh, the, the very souls of gold that are depicted as jewels upon the harlot, these people are, they're right there. And they don't know who he is. They don't know who this king is that's that has appeared to make manifest his children um, in the worship of death as he has captivated the world with a fraudulent manifestation of righteousness and we know 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 13 to 15 makes it very clear it's a golden cup but it's got death it's the presence of death in its fullness residing in the tabernacle of man and these people are 100% not cognizant that the dragon's standing right next to them. And because God has withdrawn, the only light can evaluate what is in the darkness. John chapter 1, verse 4 and 5. In him was life, 
And that life was the light of men, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. And the, the, the English Standard Version, the darkness has never overpowered it. So we know that the darkness cannot evaluate. These people are totally 100% not cognizant that death, that the responsible agent for every single human being that has died since Adam and Eve egressed the Garden of Eden, is clothed in the tabernacle of man and is standing right next to them. So this is this is terrible. I mean, it's it's a it's an amazing passage of scripture, and it it it, it gives us it gives us um, um, the manifestation of uh, illicit works that appear within. Uh, uh, you know, Satan's greatest tactical advantage is to to claim that he's an angel of light, and an angel is a messenger, and we know the light is the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter four, verse three and four. And six and seven, for God who commanded the light to shine out of, dar out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have the treasure in earth and vessels that's e that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Our hearts are darkened and terribly wicked and without renewing re and regenerating the Holy Spirit and the love of God in our lives by the word of God and the manifest presence of Jesus Christ and cognizance of God in our lives, we're hopelessly lost, and so what happens here is these people, they, it, it, as a parent, they they make an illicit, the false apostate Christianity. This is a a, a civil and ecclesiastical union of 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 the image of the beast as a civil power that resides within the beast and uh, uh, false apostate Christianity that uh, uh, is an ecclesiastical power that makes covenant with death. And we know the image of the beast is the the spiritually the highest manifestation of of proximity to the appearing of Santi Antichrist spiritually. Okay, because they are the ones that worship death and the full manifestation of the what could be called the Church of Satan as this appears in the seal of Satan. Revelation chapter thirteen, verse fifteen through seventeen. And he had power to give life unto the image to the beast, that the image to the beast should both speak as he pours out the spirit of Antichrist and cause and and cause that as many would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So here we have, we have the medium by which the image of the beast anoints people with the spirit of Antichrist to darken their hearts so they're not cognizant that death is residing within their environment and death has come to full fruition in the tabernacle of, of God and uh, the fact that the image of the beast is the corporeal body that enforces satanic captivity and causes the mark of the beast on pain of death to fall upon all flesh as the image to the beast labors to satiate its own illicit desires in, a, in an illegal harvest with and, and ca by captivating people and incorporating the worship of death into constitutionalism in the democratic societies of our world. Revelation 13, 16, and 17, and causeth, and he causeth all, both small, and this is not, this is not the beast. It doesn't say the beast causes it, and it doesn't say false apostate Christianity causes it. It says the image of the beast, and he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, receive a mark in the right hand and their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark of the name of the beast or the number of his name. So, we know that, 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 only light can evaluate what is in darkness. Therefore, I, I admonish everyone, don't focus on darkness. Don't go and start looking for people's doctrines to evaluate people, okay? Because you're on a fool's errand. And the only way you can evaluate what is in darkness is if you're standing in the light, okay? So you're on a fool's errand. If you're trying to find some special rite or ritual, ritual naming Satan in the body of Christ, you're on nothing but a fool's errand. Because that's not, that's, for one, that's, that's nothing but darkness, and all you're doing is, is attempting to, to uh, evaluate, you know, uh, uh, I don't even know how to put this. You're attempting to evaluate darkness by standing in the darkness. Okay, the only way to evaluate darkness is by standing in the light. If there's something you need to know, that's uh, it, false doctrines is not what removed um, pe professing Christians from mercy and grace. It was an illicit relationship with death in the form of the image of the beast. And the civil ecclesiastical union, as the image of the beast labored for power 
to to kill people to satiate its illicit desires. That's the that's the high manifestation of the Church of Satan and the worship of Satan. The image of the beast is the closest proximity spiritually to the appearing of Antichrist. False apostate Christianity don't even know they don't know who's standing next to them. Okay, so it's the image of the beast. If you want to look at anything, you can look at the image of the beast because that's the immediate threat to, to the, the public at large today. <laughs> so it's not false apostate Christianity. And uh, uh, as far as religious ceremonies and rites are concerned, really, you know, if, if you're not standing in the light, you're not going to know anyway. You're just on a fool's errand. And so uh, uh, arm yourself with the light of God's word. And if there's something you need to know about false, uh, you know, about Christian doctrine, God will make that known to you. And that's so there's only way that only one way that's going to come is by the manifestation of the glory of God residing within your heart. What does, whatsoever doth make manifest is light. God is light and whatsoever does make manifest is light. So. But then again, the image of the beast has light. It has just enough light to evaluate where the darkness is. And God has given it that so to make manifest its desire to exchange its soul to Satan as it understood some doctrines that other people didn't understand. And then it exchanged that. It exchanged the worship and the glory of, of Jesus Christ for that of the world willfully. That's the manifestation of it willfully uh, leaving its first habitation as Jude 6 proclaims that the demons of hell did and becoming children of Satan just to, to satiate their own temporal illicit, illicit desires. So, we know that the image of the beast is laboring for a facsimile, facsimile of satanic communism, affording the few immunity to perfect um, the worship, uh, the uh, to perfect illicit works in the presence of God, to which is actually the worship of of devils, and so um, Romans chapter seven verse twelve through fourteen, where God appears, God is the law is holy, the commandment holy, just and good was in that which is good made death unto me. God forbid sin that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good. And this is the image of the beast is doing this to gain temporal impunity for its iniquity, transgression, and sin, and to conceal, to conceal systemic illicit works from cognizance of, of, of amongst not only the children of God and the children of man, but from cognizance from the public in general. And it's, 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 and this, this, this is another manifest. This is a very high manifestation of of satanic captivity that resides with upon the image of the beast. We know that you know when people commit crimes against the public, this is public knowledge and democracy. And to try to conceal this, to conceal illicit works from the the public consciousness, is is just another manifestation of the image of the beast residing to darken people uh, in captivity to what is true and to reality. Reality is the choices that men apply in life and truth is the eternal consequences of those choices. So Hosea, cha Hosea chapter four, verse six, the last reference here. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing thou, thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. So here's Here's a curse that's that's people that you know we know the law of God we don't we're not made righteous by by our laboring to fulfill the law we're made righteous by fulfilling the law in love and that's it's never legalism to to keep the law of God as as contained in the Ten Commandments thou shalt not kill thou shalt not commit adultery thou shalt not steal it's never legalism to keep any of these precepts because you love God. And that's the manifestation of the glory of God and the fruits of righteousness abiding within people's soul. And it says the, the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, good and faith, meaning temperance against such there's no law. And so we know that these are, these are uh, uh, spiritual forces that will become predominant within the life of true converts. And they will, it will, they will maintain,
maintained to be so. The joy of the Lord is your strength. And up until the end of, uh, up until um, a man is, is, is expires and then the judgment comes upon him or we we go through the final moments of earth's history but the bible makes it very clear here you know we know god's holiness that is defined at, as uh, uh the 10 commandments it's the boundaries of his character when you break this you step out side of holiness 1 peter chapter 1 verse 15 and 16, but as he which hath called you is holy, be ye holy in all manner of conversation, for it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. So, Jeffrey Leon, if you're edified by this program, please hit the like button, subscribe to this channel, receive notifications of future installments. Remember, you can come to the throne room of God today and receive your healing directly if you're abiding in mercy and grace as manifested by Matthew chapter 13, verse 10 through 15. Thank you.